Well, hello there, and welcome to A Film A Day with me, Jordan Woodley. And today, I look at the um, Air Jordan documentary, One Man and His Shoes. Um, it's quite interesting, I suppose. I, one thing I hadn't intended was that um, I, I was struggling at the, being totally candid um, in deciding what kind of film I wanted to watch uh, this week in this slot. Um, and it was only on the day of selection that I honestly did a bit of a browse. And I was really sure, initially I didn't intend to watch a documentary, it was only my, when I realised it had been several weeks since I'd last covered a documentary feature film, that um, I came across this film and, I don't know, I was drawn to it. There was just something about the, um, I suppose, sort of the nature of, of the story of the Air Jordans that made me kind of go, OK, let's let's check this out. This This might be you know, actually quite an interesting deep dive on the origin of something that started as a, as a, a sports-centric um, product and became this huge, you know, international phenomenon in, in um, you know, in, 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 in sportswear. Of course, quite by chance, this is also the week in which Space Ta Jam The Legacy Continues? Um is being released. Now, admittedly, it is a really, really nice link to be able to talk about Michael Jordan, the Air Jordans, basketball, Space Jam, and link it to something that uh, is being released at the moment. I mean, that all was entirely serendipity. But it's pleasing. It's, it's, it's quite pleasing to sort of have that, whether it was a subconscious decision or just pure chance, because, of course, this entire documentary centres around Michael Jordan through the um, perception of the Air Jordans. Uh, directed by Yemi Bar um, Barami, it, uh, this is a, a um, I suppose it's, quite, it, it, it's, it's a British look at, a, at an American phenomenon. I mean, the Air Jordans have come over here, but they're nowhere near... The, the monumental product that they are in the US. And I, I have to admit, it, it, it's interesting. I, I was aware of the Air Jordans. There was something that, you know, would come up in, in sort of general cultural awareness. But I hadn't fully realised how big a phenomenon they were until I'd watched this documentary. Because... The beauty of this, I suppose, and it's like any, I suppose, capitalist-based documentary where it, you know, it examines how, you know, in the pure ethos of capitalism, products are not just products. You know, products become something so entrenched within society that they hit so many different levels of, of you know, and, and, and different sort of stratas that a product becomes more than just something that we simply purchase and use. It becomes a cultural touchstone. And I've never seen a better representation of it than through this documentary. That, you know, you look at the Air Jordans and you think, what is the origin of this? You know, wh how does it impact sport, black culture, poverty... And, and and insane wealth and, and, you know, sort of represent so much to so many different people and yet ultimately it's just a pair of shoes or a series of pairs of shoes. You know, I, I, I cannot... I almost struggle to believe that it's just a pair, a, a franchise based around a pair of shoes, a named brand of shoes, somehow has such a, such a significance... In, in society and that it actually weirdly shifts society in a major way. I mean, so I suppose the, the nice structuring of this documentary is the fact that it's initially not about the Jordans. It's about the uh, rise of basketball 
within cult in culture. The rise of the Bulls. Michael Jordan. The fact that Michael Jordan was the third draft pick of a college football selection for a team who were never expected to do particularly well. So the Bulls were an underdog, you know, were a lower echelon basketball team. They managed to acquire this third choice performer, but no one particularly had any awareness of his skill level. And of course, he rocketed into the stratosphere and took the Bulls with him and became, you know, this legend, this greatest, one of the greatest sportsmen in history, because you know, there just wasn't anyone like Michael Jordan at the time. And people argue, well, there are, you know, LeBron is a better basketballer. And, you know, since we've had better basketballers and if we step outside of basketball, you know, sportsman wise, his impact isn't quite as significant as, you know, someone like Muhammad Ali or, um, or Mo Farah for the, for Britain or, you know, and yet I think there is this thing about Michael Jordan and it's hard to quite put your finger on exactly. Or David Beckham, that was the other one I was thinking, sorry. Pop, just popped into my head. Um, but there is this thing about Michael Jordan, and it's to do, I suppose, with the commodification of a person. And it's not necessarily a good thing. You can debate whether it's a bad thing, but it's, it, it's a complex ideology, which is, of course, and, and, and it ties into black culture and the m commodification of black people. Because the way the documentary examines basketball as it existed pre-Michael Jordan was this sort of, you know, you had your basketballers, you had these black guys, you, the, the, you know, brands would represent them, go, yep, you're going to wear, you know, Adidas shoes or Nike shoes or, you know, and, and then we're going to put you in commercials where you're going to do things like rap. And you can feel the discomfort in that, that... You know, there is this strange racial subtext about, you know, the representation of black people on camera meant that they had to play into stereotypes. So these basketballers were being made to rap for commercials, even though it is agonisingly obvious that they have no experience or skill within hip hop. It's just because, well, they're black, so obviously they'll rap in their commercials. And then... And, and then that wasn't always the case. There were... Um, uh, other basketballers who who were you know cultural icons who were shifting basketball and, and sort of you know were becoming fame hugely famous basketballers but michael jordan i suppose his impact was like um tectonic now obviously i have a certain bias and this is com this is this is revealing a little about myself which is my link to michael jordan and it's not directly through basketball i'm not the biggest basketball fan being being totally honest and and uh, about it but secret of 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 me i was actually named jordan after michael jordan and that is a genuinely sincere story and so therefore i've you know on some level i have an investment within the character of michael jordan and i'm also very very relieved that he has not been tied up in any horrifying scandal you know that we'll get onto the scandals that surround him to do with the air jordans but and other smaller issues that have plagued his career but mercifully you know to put it simply i'm really pleased that he's not been cancelled or been revealed to be some, you know, in the culture that we're currently in, where we are exposing genuinely horrifying, monstrous people and the acts of people who are incredibly powerful and rich and, and exploitative. So far, he, he, we're good. We're good. And of course, to reveal perhaps a little more about myself, my middle name, Pierce, is named after Pierce Brosnan. And again, relieved to quite a significant degree, Pierce Brosnan has not yet been cancelled. So, you know, I have stake in both of those uh, celebrity figures and uh, they haven't let me down so far. Anyway, but the point about Michael Jordan is the fact that, you know, there was something about him and it wasn't just the fact that he was a phenomenal sportsman. He was. And yet, he also knew... I mean, it, this is pure happenstance. It's not like he... 
you know, started to become a successful sportsman and knew how to play the system, some of these things just happen to be by chance. And the documentary is talking to people who worked for Adidas, Nike, who, who, you know, who worked for the, for the Bulls. You know, we're talking about people who were right there and decisions that were made relating to Michael Jordan and his career. And the idea was that, that, that because of a series of, of events, they decided to brand an entire line based around, you know, Michael Jordan, hence the, you know, the Air Jordans. And the thing that astounds me, and it's never really sort of elaborated upon, is that they sort of, you know, a couple of people who were interviewed sort of suggest this, this was a mad idea. But frankly... Basing your entire line around around one sportsman is is, is huge because of the fact that he, the success of the brand would be entirely tied to the success of the sportsman. And so, you know, if Michael Jordan had had a very strong start to his career, and then for whatever reason, you know, his 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 light dimmed, and he you know became a successful, but he wasn't this huge megastar that he did become, then it's very possible that the Air Jordans would have crashed and burned with with his, you know, with his failure to, to sort of live up to expectations. Now, that's not what happened. He was a huge success, you know, for the basketball um, industry and, and, and again for the sportswear industry. And, and he shifted, you know, th- th- like I say, there was this tectonic shift because of how successful he was and because he branded himself beyond just sports you know that it it became this shocking like ad you know growth and expansion and and you know and, and it was hugely profitable profitable to him because you know they despite this gamble you know nike didn't necessarily have a huge you know didn't have total like faith in this product success and so agreed a deal with him that was like hugely profitable for him like one that no one would agree a deal the kind of deal that would never have been agreed now you know it's very much the george lucas merchandising agreement that you think wow you know now nothing like that could ever be no no one would ever allow someone this much um capital within within a certain product because this it's like a billionaire maker um, and that's what happened, you know, and and it's and and the documentary, as I say, is sort of into three parts. It it it's the first part examines the rise of Michael Jordan, the rise of the Bulls, this huge change and shift within basketball culture. The second part is much more about the the growth of the Air Jordans and how. It wasn't just Michael Jordan who was affected by this. You have Spike Lee, who had only made She's Gotta Have It. It wasn't like he'd made Do the Right Thing. It wasn't like he'd made Dog Day Afternoon. This is still first film Spike Lee. That, again, purely, you know, by the whims of a couple of people who saw She's Gotta Have It, they decided, we want this guy to help. Oh, and the commercials that, you know, that were made for She's Gotta Have It which was the selling point based on, on one person's account, it, you know, became this thing where they were like, oh, we need Spike Lee, we want him to direct, you know, commercials for, with Michael Jordan, about the Air, or about the Air Jordans at least. I mean, some were with Michael Jordan and others were, like I say, were, were more just about Spike Lee and the character he plays in She's Gotta Have It. I'm oh, sorry, the play he plays in She's Gotta Have It. And, again, this was... He, you know, a huge addition and a shift. And, and the idea that, you know, these shoes didn't just affect the sports industry and change the sports industry. They changed film, the film industry because it's quite possible Spike Lee might never have been as big a success as he was had he not had this opportunity. I mean, perhaps he would have done. Who's to say? But this was, it was a massive string to his bow. And so, you know, you see how this starts to affect sort of culture in 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 ways that wouldn't have been identified at the time but historically we look back at and go wow this is huge and like i say so you see the you know the second act of the film examines 
the growth of the Air Jordans, the growth of the industry, where it go, you know, and becomes this billion dollar industry that that you know essentially launched all of these, you know, Michael Jordan, Spike Lee. I mean, you could argue that Space Jam exists because of Michael Jordan's, you know, commercialization. Um, huge, huge effect that this has in ways that, that, that are quite astounding. And then you have the third act of the documentary, and, and it was quite shocking how much of a shift this was. And it, it does tie into um, this, um, you know, sort of cultural shift in the attitudes people had. And again, it ties into the commodification of, of a black person, and the idea of, of sort of the value that people attach to things that are ultimately just products, which is the idea that Air Jordans became these astounding, you know, like, like they were like liquid gold in certain American communities to the point where, and, and this is where the sort of the, the darker side of this really lies, where, you know, people were being killed because of Air Jordans, that, that, you know, people were being robbed and killed. And, and it follows the story of um, a guy named uh, oh, Joshua Williams, I think, if, if I'm right, um, who was 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 killed because he, he just bought the new Air Jordans and some guys saw him with them and, and, and robbed, you know, and, and killed him for them. And you think that's... That's ludicrous. The idea that people would kill someone for a pair of shoes, and you know, the the film goes from this, you know, this this very sort of distant look at basketball culture in the eighties to people's accounts of the way that Michael Jordan grew. But but again, there's talking heads. There's a certain amount of sort of professional distance that people are sort of just giving their memories of of the growth of the industry. And then it closes in on the family of this Joshua. And we're following them as they, you know, discuss his passing and the sort of futility of it and the meaninglessness of it. And, and this is, when I say Michael Jordan has some scandal around him, I mean, this is one of the major ones where the relationship between people who have been victims of crime because of Nike and because of Air Jordans you know like Air Nike pay lip service they did things like they sent a pair of the new Air Jordans to the family the, the sister of this murder victim but there was never a personal apology you know like a, someone coming forward and, and attending say the funeral or you know talking to this family saying look you know there was no responsibility given that somehow and and it starts to discuss the way that air jordans were sort of shifted and 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 of course comp you know corp corporations want to increase the value of their products because people were buying these like hotcakes and so of course they made them difficult to acquire but of course that gave them a street value and if they have a street value it's it's like gold. It's like people all of a sudden are going, what you know, and and it affects communities that are impoverished, and because of the impoverishedness, there is a greater amount of crime, and and you know, and consequently, as I say, people were being killed for a pair of shoes, but as as I say, I also say, you know, the fact that you have Nike, this multi-billion-dollar corporation, like you have Michael Jordan, a billionaire because of the success of this and yet there is a certain amount of responsibility that they have and yet they keep a professional distance from it now you know the argument is made about michael jordan the fact that he has always presented himself as an upstanding you know a, a good person who who just is a good sportsman and seems like a nice guy you know but he's never put himself forward as like a big social leader he, he, you know, he's never been some huge representative of, of sort of the black community within America. He just, you know, he's a good sportsman, he's a good businessman, and he's and he's never, you know, he, he, he he's, uh, well, there are other scandals surrounding Michael Jordan 
you know to do with to to do with um, personal issues that he has or has allegedly had around gambling, but that's pri- you know that's a problem that is his and to to deal with and is very private to him. The idea that he you know that, that he someone says to him well you know at the end of the day he's not Malcolm X he doesn't have that say you know he doesn't have that sort of sense of social responsibility and giving back to the communities from which he came he you know he just is successful and he just lives his life but as a consequence to that it means that when crimes like this happen you know he he's kept a certain amount of distance from it and it means that you know not only is he not being a social leader it means he's also not you know, giving back in a way that, you know, showing a sense of responsibility to people who are victims of crime because of his product. And it's it's a difficult issue because it's, it's you know, it's a systemic, systemic problem surrounding, um, you know, something that is ultimately just choose and... That you know, it's not up to him how sh- how they choose to sell these shoes and the value of these shoes. These are just perceived ideas, and, and you know, they're, they're you know these are just something that people have just dis- culturally or societally became valuable. But they but then obviously a company wants to maximize their profits. They just unfortunately also didn't consider. The consequences of doing something like that and the impact it has on on everyday people and it's it's a really difficult issue and it's a really interesting way to explore how products can have this kind of social impact and as i say it goes from being about sports to being about michael jordan to being about film culture to then being about the personal cost of creating this I know modern modern iconography that the people go. This is valuable. We want you know when these come out. Every time a new one comes out, they have a value that we, you know, that we um, aspire to. You know, to acquire. Or, or if if we can't have them, other people can't have them in our community. And, and and there's a really difficult conversation about that and what that means. But. It makes it a really interesting documentary in that respect because it didn't expect that darker shift, that more difficult conversation. I thought it was more sort of inspirational. And and the idea that there is this heavier side to it does make it a really strong documentary and give it that sense of um, importance, that sense of, oh, wow, you know, we've seen the evolution of this, both positive and negative, and it, and it makes... This is an interesting conversation piece about social responsibility and wealth and poverty that I genuinely didn't anticipate. Yeah, so really unexpectedly good documentary. And like I say, the, the Space Jam link was purely by chance. And unfortunately, I have sort of indicated the darker side of this. So, um, but it's still nice to be able to do something that relates to, to that. Um, but anyway... Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment below, and share the video, because this will help me in the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell to get notifications of when new videos are uploaded. Check out my back catalogue of over 200 videos, and follow me on Twitter at Jordan underscore Woodley, where I tweet about films, TV shows, and I share these videos once they're uploaded to YouTube, either the day of or the day after. Thank you for joining me.